let's do this this will be fun I haven't recorded in a long time stuff has been going on hiya I'm Aviana Lemaire and welcome to my cozy chat and autism and ADHD general ND station um, <laughs> coffee with Avila. This is where I'm going to be talking about all kinds of stuff about life and today I'm going to lightly broach the extremely expansive subject of autigender and what it means and some information about what my experience has been. Now before I get into that I am standing here messing with my mug of coffee because today I've got coffee. It's a nice breakfast coffee and I did buttered coffee didn't have much to eat had a little bit of melon that's basically all water so I did throw some butter in the coffee and whip it up so it'll be nice and rich and be kind of my meal and then I have this big old mar pole marshmallow pole I saw these things and I was offered some candy and when I saw that the candy was a gigantic marshmallow twist in multiple colors the only thing I could think was and that's going in my coffee so today I've got it in my coffee and I've been waiting for this forever and it's a high comfort and cozy day because stuff has been going on sometimes stuff goes on in life I'm gonna leave it at that so we're going to get into the subject of Audi gender based on my actual experience because I don't know that I've heard quite my experience depicted before so I'm just gonna see if I can delicately touch on some things um, as far as the definition goes I'm going to upload a couple of shorts later on it's gonna come up next week so expect that maybe on Monday if I don't do it earlier Monday and perhaps the next day and those shorts are going to give you the flat definition of Audi gender plus a little more information and then we're going to go into the difference between sex and gender because it seems rather simplistic on the surface when it's something people are talking about but it's actually not that simplistic there's a lot of confusion and so as long as there's a great deal of confusion it tends to be a bit more complicated than it really needs to be and this is the those definitions are going to be the crux of where these experiences of RT gender and everything else kind of come up so as a basic start for anybody who doesn't know what Audi gender is it's basically just saying I'm autistic and my experience of gender as somewhat of a cultural issue is going to be very different it's going to be perhaps undelineated or I'm going to have a different method of delineation and my experience is based so greatly on my autistic brain and my autistic viewpoint and my conception of logic and truth and everything of that nature that it's simply going to change it's going to vary so whatever gender I do or don't associate with within that definition it basically means whatever gender I do or don't associate with is coming underneath the header of the greater experience of having the autistic brain being autistic and just seeing and experiencing things very differently some of us do not have any idea how to explain what we're experiencing and there aren't yet enough definitions for all of us to feel like we're fitting 100 percent in that's definitely going to be something that factors into my experience I'm gonna take a small moment because I'm playing with a marshmallow and it's a it's a floppy fun colored marshmallow I'm gonna take a sip mm. I did not do this it's not a very sweet marshmallow though I might need more sugar I've got it I did not get this just so I could play with it I got to drink this it, it's it's coffee with a marshmallow it matches my mug are you kidding me okay so let me see if I can start to explain a little bit of my experience with this it's gonna be hard to sum this up but in my personal viewpoint gender does not exist and that makes it interesting to try to explain it because okay I don't know how this is gonna sound but I'm in a place where I'm just telling the truth my experience and my viewpoint is that a human being is a spirit a creature something that is beyond your flesh it's not about your body it's the essence of some form of life 
some form of being and you're inside of a body, um, that body then experiences whatever it is biologically programmed to experience. So for me, when you're talking about sex versus gender, the only thing I can really truly associate with is sex because for me that is biology and that is so far as science has defined it that is scientific fact and I'm not going to argue with that because that's been my experience and it has been a great deal of my experience and affected a huge amount of my life so no matter how I feel in a gender-based role the only thing I can really say I fully associate with is the fact that I have a female body and that for me is not complicated on any level whatsoever so we can move on from that pretty quickly um, you know you hit the age of puberty and things start to scream at you they start to change stuff happens it's affected my life greatly so again not something I'm gonna argue with and not something I see the need to argue with because it has a basic medical reason you know if I end up dealing with different things medically it's necessary for my well-being God willing everything is working out absolute perfectly and I'm being taken care of and granted favor and I'm safe and I like to say these things because life is complicated for some of us I believe I'm going to be taken care of and I believe I'm going to be taken care of better because people can look at certain information cold flat information that says nothing about who I am or my life experience per se it just says what my body needs and what my body will need taken into account before it's treated so that's pretty much the end of that subject for me um, moving into the concept of gender it gets a little bit more complicated um, I think I'm a person for whom it's supposed to be simple and that's never been the case but I I recognize that it is supposed to be simple it's definitely supposed to be more simplistic of an experience and I can accept that because I am the person who was born with biology female I was assigned female at birth um, so my gender identity has always been taken as female and so I grew up in a time that was slightly different than this one and I feel weird addressing it because this is very much my life but you know when the next generation comes along and they get around high school or college age then it starts to feel like your generation's experience is ancient history and no one understands anymore so I'm feeling uncomfortable bringing it up I was born in the 80s and the 80s was a time frame when all of a sudden everything that was blue was for boys everything that was pink was for girls you would walk up and down the toy aisles and it would be almost like you know everything had been painted blue on one side and pink on the other there were trucks on one side and there were dolls on the other and ne'er shall the two twains meet so as a child and an autistic child it was extremely bizarre for me excuse me I've got a hiccup <laughs> pardon me I was trying to stave that off but I'm thinking it's going to be happening. I'm going to try to do in this. I'm going to try to get this done in one shot. So let's go back to it. It's really weird for me as a child. I'm an autistic child. I did not process everybody else's cultural demands because they didn't make sense to me. So I was a child who had a toy fire truck and a toy baby doll. I played with both. It, it might the fire truck might have been more fun because it's red and it's got a ladder mine had a ladder that slid up and down and long story short somebody who should have watched their child didn't and it ended up getting broken but I'm gonna pretend I don't care I liked the fire truck better I'll put it that way I say with love so I do care but I like the fire truck and I also like the doll in different purposes I played with both things um, I grew up in a generation where when I started collecting model cars and they were scale model cars and I think I don't know how you pronounce it one of those brands was Maisto I think it's M-A-I-S-T-O and you get these metallic cars and some of them had great details like doors that swing open and trunks stuff like that 
I was in a generation where when I talked to an older cousin from a couple of generations before that, and I told him that I played with cars, that I had been there as a child helping and learning how to change the oil in the real car with the person who was doing the car maintenance. Um, I mean, he found that pretty surprising. <laughs> And I had been around for just long enough as a little girl to know that's not unusual. People think that's surprising. I didn't click on why, but that's how I grew up. It was little things like that. Um, I have a tendency to wear, a few years back, the maxi dress came into style. This worked for me because now you can take one slip of clothing and throw it on. It's very easy to wear. I do wear dresses. I wear pants. Back in my day, the fact that you wear dresses and you wear pants and the degree to which you bo wear both and basically whether or not they all had flowers on them or just a solid color like a black dress is somehow less girly than a pink dress with flowers on it right so the gender rules are pretty specific and pretty bizarre for me to process because i don't get it why is a flower girlier than a flat color a flower on a dress is meant to represent a real flower and in real life, I don't know of any human being, whether they identify as a male human or a female human, who is not going to enjoy a flower or enjoy a flower field. You've got a lot of people who, so far as anyone knows now anyway, um, identified as male or are called male painters who are famous for painting flowers. And nobody says, wow, that's some really girly subject matter. Why didn't he paint a truck or a horse or something with real girth to it? It's just a weird series of categories for me. And if you think about it far enough, like the flower thing, none of it makes any kind of sense. But I was in that time frame where just the way I dressed made a difference. So even me to this day, it's a new day, it's a new hour, era, we're in the 2020s, right? But I associate a lot with people from my generation. So I still get some kind of amused expressions and things. If I decide I'm gonna throw in that maxi dress, this is why I brought it up, it's so easy for me to put it on, I like it, I like wearing stuff like this, it's fine. If I'm not going out and running around, I don't need to have pants on, it's easy to just throw the dress on and be dressed in 10 seconds and done. No matching, nothing, it's easy, I like this, and I like the style, I like the look of it, I like all of it. But then with that dress, I'm very likely to throw on my Nikes. I call them my kicks. I'm all about sneakers that are styling. When they are styling and profiling, I call them kicks. If they are neither styling nor profiling, they are not kicks, they are just sneakers. So I might throw on my kicks with my dress. And that's that kind of thing where, for me, it's an outfit. But for someone else, especially from previous generations or my generations, that's like some kind of a message that I'm sending or it's like some kind of gender bending thing. I remember a time frame when I started to look at all the millions of different definitions for how you identify and gender identification and sexuality and all of these things. And I realized that I'd kind of fit in one place and not fit in the other. I was looking at something they call, I think, gender nonconformity. And I think that's probably the best. If you're going to look for a title, and a title is not going to fit me completely, I can guarantee you. But if you want a title, the best thing I can think of is probably gender nonconformity. Um, I just have never been a person who necessarily cared about the gender roles but no one ever really challenged me because aside from some things I would do like you know the way I dress or my interests um, you know I'm into sci-fi and action movies I can also enjoy a rom-com if given the opportunity when I'm sitting around enjoying myself I'm more likely to be focusing on Marvel and its different phases and all of my favorite stuff like that like Star Trek and Star Wars Star Wars has, we're not getting into that. The point is I'm focusing on stuff like that. Star Trek is my major issue. That's a sci-fi thing. I don't think anyone's getting gendered based on their interest in Star Trek. But when someone is talking to you and you're saying, yeah, I wanna go see this movie because lots of stuff is gonna blow up and I feel like I'm in the mood for that right now. <laughs> That's something where outside of my mind, 
that's supposed to say something. I grew up in that generation where that meant something. So I feel like everything I do on a daily basis, right down to how I choose to wear my hair and color it or what colors I wear, it was affected by that time frame of being born in the 80s, growing up in the 90s, where everything was an issue of long skirts or that sort of casual Friday style business slack and ne'er shall the two twains meet. Um, it's kind of interesting because I think now everybody is trying to say either I'm a different gender than you think and I have a specific name for it or gender isn't real cease to delineate me and put me inside of a box because of it and I feel like there wasn't even that option suggested for me during that time frame but it seems like in this time frame everybody is making those statements and they're doing what they feel and associating with their personality and what checks with their spirit what feels right in their soul and before that it seemed like we kind of hit a crux of absolutely everything in the 80s and 90s especially in the 90s and maybe even the early 2000s although I do think that grunge time frame affected it just because the style and fashion for everybody then was the same shirts and the same pants and the same colors and everything so that might have edged in there a little bit that touch of fringe society where all of a sudden it became the fad and everybody was into it they kind of played at that but it seems like mainly in that time frame right before everyone said I am whatever I say and know I am and you can't tell me that from the outside everyone was completely delineated by a line down the middle that ex that that informed my experience because I was growing up that whole time where there was a line down the middle and it was you know, it's not a big deal this day if a girl says, yeah, I went into the male section, somebody who identifies as a girl, like, I I, I don't even want to get into it, but I, I guess as far as the term being used, it's not something that bothers me. It's one of those things where it depends on how you're using it. But when you get into the intricacies of how you're using a term, then all kinds of things that have nothing to do with gender identity could suddenly bother someone, so that that's neither really here or there but someone who identifies as a girl these days will easily say I went into the men's, men's section and I got these shorts and it's not a big deal but when I was a child it was like okay I'm wearing shorts from the boys section and I was being raised in this society I've been bought this stuff it does fit differently and so there was some physical comfort issues going along with it but it was more like Honestly, the colors were different, the cut was different. Um, it felt, it wasn't more comfortable. I, people are always like, male clothing is more comfortable, but it wasn't really more comfortable for me. I guess just the cut of it, for whatever reason, it didn't sit on me properly. But I had a lot of stuff weird going on in my head because I was that kid where, I'm talking kind of in the higher part of my voice right now, but I was, I was a child who had all these girlfriends who were always like this and talking about stuff and really into new kids on the block and shrieking about the boys they liked. And here I was sitting off down here sounding like this. <laughs> so I was just trying to figure out where I even fit in this world because again, I was on an autistic child I didn't really fit anywhere anyway so I was trying to figure out where I was supposed to fit and what I was supposed to do so I just remember having this outfit weirdly challenge me in some way because it didn't seem to be what I was supposed to be doing and I didn't know what to do with that it didn't challenge me on a spiritual level or on anything real I just felt a bit confused because it wasn't pink it wasn't pink and purple it wasn't pink and white it was just sort of I think if I remember correctly a yellow top or maybe it was green I think it was something like um, a yellow top with green and blue shorts and I don't know it just for some reason it seemed like in the girls wear section you didn't really run into an outfit that consisted of a yellow top and green and blue shorts because it was like if there was no lace to delineate that it was feminine then somehow it didn't count. I just, I, 
if it wasn't pink, you know, it was that time frame. So that's one of those times when I think I really started to think about it because before that everything had been well delineated by the time frame. I didn't have to think about it. I just had to wear what had been handed me. So now something else had been handed me and I didn't know how to fit into how I was supposed to behave based on it. That is probably the long way around of getting into my next point, which is that for me, gender as a whole has always been what was expected of me and nothing to do with who I am or my true experience. I have no idea personally if gender exists at, inside of me. It does not exist at all in my world. When no one else is in the room, gender does not exist. It's not an issue. It's an issue uh, and my viewpoint of it and my experience of it has always been that gendered things and behaviors are an issue of people in society doing what either feels comfortable to them or creating rules out of nowhere, out of the ethers, not even out of the ethers. You would expect that the ethers might contain something grander from another world, but they're just pulling things out of nowhere that seem to suit them or suit a cause or keep you, and this is very important for me, from my viewpoint, or keep you in your place. So now you are allowed to do certain things and if you do anything that's different, suddenly someone can make a problem out of that. You're not conforming properly. Now you're problematic in a little way. I experienced that kind of thing. I did grow up with multicultural and religious based experiences, but obviously I was raised in particular cultures and religion. And I think when you start throwing religion in there, it's pretty common to end up with some gender based ideals that everybody else is having that again did not belong to me. In my life when no one else is in the room, gender doesn't exist. I can't say how it feels for other people because if someone else is saying I specifically feel like this gender, I am not here to challenge that. It is not an issue in my day. That's very much going to be an issue for you to figure out. <laughs> so those are my feelings on it. My experience of it has been gender has been another part of my masking facade. It's been another way that I changed my voice or I changed my terminology or my subject matter so that when I'm talking to somebody, um, especially based on their behavior, I found that with masking, this is a whole other video, but with masking, mirroring is a pretty good technique. I'll get into that one day because I think it's pretty interesting for people who would like to know how to mask better or just want to understand it some more. Mirroring is basically just looking at what a person is giving you and sort of reflecting it back to them. So I would do somewhat of a gender mirroring thing and that would generally be based on that person's age, the generation they grew up in, their customs, what they're accustomed to, or their culture combined with their age generally. And so a lot of this was just basically, like I said, it's just masking. It's just stuff I would put on in order to make my day easier because at the end of the day for me, whether it was gender specific or some other type of masking that I was doing, it was because my heart can only take so much, my emotions and my experience being judged all of the time on things that very often mean absolutely nothing to me is exhausting in a way I can't begin to get into right now. I would do whatever was necessary in order to be not abused or less abused that day. Um, it was always for me about peace. So we get into a time frame now where the past few years, especially since 2020 hit, I had a lot of time where I didn't have to get up and go out and do everything all the time and be bothered with everyone else's lives and facades and beliefs. And I started to explore everything for my own knowledge. So I could know how I identify within myself. And again, because of my behaviors throughout life, someone would get an idea in their head and they would say something to me. People have said it in passing. People have said it judgmentally. 
but I wanted to know what actually made sense to me. So I really started to delve into the gender thing and uh, maybe, maybe one day when I figure out how to explain it, I'll do a video talking about autistic sexuality a little bit. It's not a subject a whole lot of people are talking about. And while I can understand why, it's, it kind of makes me want to talk about it more. But I started exploring stuff like demisexuality. This is why it'd be hard for me to make a video because I can say I relate to some of it and then I can say I don't relate to it. It's another one of those things where much like with gender, you can find stuff for, I can find something that's close to my life experience and how I feel, but it's close, but no cigar, or at least the cigar is not lit. So it's just kind of sitting there. It means absolutely nothing. It's kind of hanging out of the mouth of one of the Marx brothers doing absolutely nothing, but being a prop. It's there, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> nobody's using it in any real way. So <laughs> I came close to finding something in that category too, but if I were going to continue to search for something that describes me with sexuality, we haven't hit that one either. I can tell you this though, on the subject of autigender, it hit me instantaneously. I had to go do some research because I had an experience where as soon as I read the word before I knew what it meant, I could tell by looking at the word and the substructure of it, AT for autism and gender for gender, that that was going to describe me and I was going to identify with it. Mm. So I did some more research into that. And the more research I do, the more it hits its spot on the head. I want to put a small footnote here that's not going to be expansive. Um, to address the fact that I have heard people saying that the term autigender or autism gender has possibly, I don't know if it's true, but has possibly had a beginning in people being more derogatory against the autistic community where they were using it as an insult or else as some kind of strange joke for people who can't begin to relate to the autistic experience using autism as a joke and saying that their sexuality is so cuckoo basically that no one can define it it must be autistic none of these things are what this term actually means and i have not personally come to it understanding that it comes from a derogatory place my experience until i delved in to do deeper research was always that it was just a definition for something that actually exists and a pretty spot on and specifically accurate definition for my experiences in life. So I 100% identify as autigender because when it comes right down to it, I believe in logic, I think in logic, and I believe in self proofs. Meaning if a thing can it prove itself to be true, I don't see the point for it in my universe and it's not a part of my day. And there's nothing about the concept of just run into a little fork. Don't know if you heard that from my delicate breakfast of melon. I didn't move it. That's the clinking sound. Um, it's out of the way now, so that should be gone. My experience has been that gender doesn't exist when no one else is in the room, when no one is judging me, when no one's deciding my hair being short or long has something to do with it, when nobody is trying to figure me out based on my romantic life or my sex life or my sexual identification or the way that I dress, when it's not about something weird like a color or a pattern or how you drink your coffee or your tea, that's a weird one because that's also just regional and cultural like everything else is. Um, some of it is temporal, like the concept of guys having short hair and girls having long hair as a gender marker. Um, there's a pretty long history of guys having long hair and that considered to be really beautiful and lovely on them. I mean, I'm, even the terminology I'm using um, for a guy in that time frame, it would be more like a man is handsome and a woman is beautiful. But if you read literature and go back a little while, you'll hear the term or you'll read the term a handsome woman 
being used repeatedly. So it's a temporal trend. It's not something that proves itself. It's something that people have to fight to prove with everything that they do, everything that they wear, all of their opinions. I've never been able to believe in gender because it doesn't exist when no one is talking about it. And that has been my experience. So that's my belief. I don't know what anyone else has been. I'm not challenging that, but I'm here to tell you what it's like from the inside for me. And that's what it's like. Um, so that is probably all I have to say on the subject right now. I feel like I've done dipsy doodles around the world again, talking about different things. It's a weird video because I like to delve into subject matter and get into stuff. But I feel like on this one, I basically talked about the difference between pink and blue and long and short hair. But that's really what this video is about because someone is questioning, questioning gender and gender has always been a construct based on whatever that particular society likes or wants to talk about. And so the way you hold your legs when you sit, whether they're slammed together or they're crossed at the ankles or they're crossed all the way at the top or you just splay them out wide, that kind of thing, that's, that's a gender issue. That's, that's just a sitting style. It doesn't really say anything about your soul or how you associate or what goes, what runs through your heart when you're lying in bed at night and the lights are out and there's no one there but perhaps the moonlight and you. So this video was basically going to be sitting styles and colors and now I feel weird because that's what I've been talking about forever. So I'm going to just ax this as quickly as I possibly can because it went on for longer than I thought. It's a subject that could go on forever, but I still feel like the longer I talk about it, for me, the less I'm saying because there's not really anything there to say. So I'm outie now. God bless you. If you have anything to say on this subject, please leave it in the comment section. I'm very interested. And uh, like the video, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. And uh, have a blessed day. That's about it. Bye now.